Doubt, no doubt. Um, we had Jackie Long on um a couple, probably three months now. <laughs> My on, dog. Yeah, we got to talk about ATL, man. And um, how'd you get the part? And did you guys know that movie when you were making it, it was going to be such an hood or iconic classic like it was? Oh man, that's a great question, man. Shout out to Jackie Long. My dog, shout out to Al B, shout out to Lauren London, T.I., Evan, the twins, everybody. I love all those guys. Yeah. Shout out to Chris Robinson, our director. Um, okay. shout out, shout out, shout out to the public, shout out to the fans mm -hmm. for supporting the film. Man, we love you guys. I will honestly say that when we were making the film, um, we knew that it was going to um we knew it was gonna have an impact within the community. We knew people were gonna like it because, you know, Tip was starring in it. And we got big boy, you know what I'm saying? So we knew that the trap culture was gonna like it and that the South was gonna like it. Um, what, I, what I honestly was surprised about was its ability to resonate and connect even in, with mainstream audiences. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I think that's beautiful, man. I think that's the beauty of black culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our shit is so cool, man. You, it's it's undeniable. You know what I mean? Like our our music, our swag, the way we get down, the way we dress, even when it comes down to the way that we skate. Our shit is magic. That shit is black magic. Yeah. So, so to see like, you know, mainstream audiences um, gravitate towards it, allowing it to resonate within them, because it was the same kind of reaction with Drumline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for for to to be involved with films that are able to do that, man, I just feel extremely blessed. So thankful to God that I got that opportunity. Um, so thankful to you know Dallas Austin uh, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of that film, which was kind of loosely based on his own real life experience of going to the Jelly Bean skating rink here in Atlanta, Georgia, where he discovered TLC. Uh, Outcast actually used to hang out and, and roller skate at, well, pretty much the founding fathers of Atlanta, including Jermaine Dupri, the founding fathers of the Atlanta music scene, what we now know as Atlanta today. All of those guys, when they were kids, used to go to the Jelly Bean Skating Rink and hang out. And that's where the Atlanta culture kind of started from. This Atlanta culture that you see now that they created, you know, uh, uh, from Kawan Prather and all of those guys um, you know, who are in the executive space have helped push forth the movement of Atlanta. All of those guys uh, came from that that little uh, that little rink and hanging out there. And so to be able to retell uh, that part of Atlanta history, uh, even if it wasn't a fictional space and for it to be recognized the way that it was and appreciated and celebrated, man, I'm, I'm just honored to be a part of it. Hopefully we'll get a chance to do it again soon. You know, before we all have to go into retirement, being AARP and shit like that. But uh, <laughs> but I I'm I'm just thankful um to the fans, um to the community, to the black community especially that keeps it alive. Uh, whether it's being shown on BET all the time, or you know whether you guys are hitting me up on social media, um, it's the black community and the culture that's keeping it alive. And uh, I just want to tell all of you out there how much I appreciate y'all for that. Um. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to the cast as well. Absolutely, man. We definitely know what are the talks are there being a part two. Is that, is that something that's still in the works? I know that there were talks, but I don't know how guaranteed that was. You know what? Uh, we shot the funny thing about it is we shot a trailer. We got some footage in the can. Um, there is a script for ATL too, um, but just to kind of answer people's questions, there you know when putting these kinds of films together, there's a lot of politics that goes on behind the scenes and you know especially as it relates to black content and our story being told um sometimes it could be an uphill battle you know what i mean we're getting we're getting uh distributors to recognize um to recognize the 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 importance of it the power of it and the beauty in it uh but hopefully hopefully 
um, Dallas, uh, Will Smith, uh, T. Boz, Warner Brothers, Tip, uh, Chris Robinson. Hopefully all of those people um, will be able to come together and find some kind of way by which we can do. I know that the rest of the supporting cast is very enthusiastic about it. Um, I know at one point when I talked to Tip, when we were out in Los Angeles uh, together and we saw each other during SB weekend, he did say during that time, because that was right when uh, Nipsey had been uh, murdered, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all knew Lauren was uh, very distraught, rightfully so. Uh, from his personal perspective, he wanted to give Lauren more time, yeah. understandably so, to where she could grieve and mourn for her husband. And uh, I don't know where she's at now with that, uh, whether right. she's ready to go or not. But whenever, whenever the stars line up, when the studio and the producers can get it together, when the cast, when we're all in a space where, where we could come together and do it, we we most certainly will do it. Definitely. I got a couple more questions on how much you got. Yeah, um, sure. The Lion King situation. I know you talked about this a few times on a few different platforms, but mm -hmm. if you can break it down for our audience, um, your mom was instrumental in making this decision when Lion King pretty much mm -hmm. offered you $2 million and you elected to take the residuals um, instead. Mm -hmm. Can you break that down a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, I could be just completely honest with people and just saying um, it's really just fundamentals in business. Uh, you know, I, I like I said, like I stated earlier in our conversation, I, I've been very blessed where my mother already had a, a firm grip and understanding as to how to maneuver in the business of it, um, in the understanding of uh, recognizing your worth in the marketplace, recognizing your worth at the, at the negotiating table. And so my mother already had, had some past experience with doing that, you know, taking wins as well as, as, as losses, but she had the experience of knowing how a recording contract should look. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the, when the agreement first uh, was presented to us, um, to me and, and my mother and my agent, uh, my mother was just able to kind of see through the fine print and recognize and, and use her good common sense and recognize that, hey, here's an opportunity for my son to not only be a part of something great and to lend his talent to it and to establish a legacy out of that, um, but this could also give him an opportunity if this is if this is constructed properly where it could set him up right, you know, for the rest of his life to where at least this will be some some kind of residual income that he can always rely on no matter what happens in his life, whether he decides to continue on in the business or not. And so, you know, my mother just had the foresight, man, to, to, to see that there was an opportunity there um, to make that kind of move. Um, although uh, a lot of it, it had been done before in, Dis in Disney's history, like, you know, you get what you negotiate. So Disney has done those kind of deals before. It wasn't like I was the first one that did it. Mm -hmm. um, we just, you know, just spoke up like so many of those other people did. And I guess what so many other people hadn't done in the past, whether it was with Disney or any other recording contract. Um, and it ended up just, you know, it working out for me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to my mother for that. I'm thankful to God for giving my mother the foresight and the experience to be able to make that kind of decision. I'm thankful to Disney. Uh, for being so cooperative um, in the negotiations and, you know, recognizing my worth and respecting, respecting my worth and my talent and uh, agreeing to um, get involved in a relationship with me where I could stand to benefit years, years later. And it's still a great relationship that I have with Disney and I continue to work with them. So, nah, it, um, it, it was just one of those things, I think, that if, if more, especially Black artists, if more of us were aware uh, that we could do stuff like that, you don't have to accept the first thing that comes across the table. You know, recognize and, and know your worth um, and, and move accordingly in that regard and ultimately do what's best for you, you know? And uh, I think based off of stories like that, 